Hello and welcome to That British Home Said Today. I thought I'd take you on a tour around the first allotment, so let's get started. So I feel like a lot have changed over here over the month, and I thought it'd be a really awesome opportunity to share it with you. So as you can see, this bit of the allotment is amazing. Um, we've got tons and tons of tomatoes growing. I mean, they're ridiculous, and I've got to show, I've just got to show you how many tomatoes we have on a single plant. Remember, we are in Wait, let's have a look at the date. Let's not tell Porky Pies. We are second day of, of summer, yeah? Second day. Summer is on the 21st of June, so we are on the 22nd of June. Okay, so as you can see, I say, not knowing you can see, look at them! That one's even starting to blush. I wonder if it's going to be ready by the weekend. There's more here. Look at them. Look at them! And there are oodles of flowers. Look at the oodles of flowers. Oh my days. There's just oodles of them. Now you'll know that oodle is a technical term. It means lots and lots. It's like walking through a little forest here, which is lovely. So, um, yeah, I've just got tons of tomatoes. Ridiculous amount of varieties. I will have to um, ensure that I am a thousand percent saving seeds this year because I'm almost out of tomatoes. And they just look amazing, don't they? I'm so proud of me. We've also got things like nasturt nasturtiums, which I really struggle to say. And they look very pretty. Well, that one doesn't, but those two do. Um, and we've got little, little, um, what are they called? I don't know their names, but they're rabbit flowers, what I call them. Um, more nasturtiums. I've got some dahlias, and over here you can see we've got loads of stuff. Some peppers and some aubergines, which is exciting. Yes, chickens. The chickens are excited. No, it's because they're like, oh my gosh, she's here and she has treats. She has treats and she's not giving them to us. Okay, so as you can see, this is our raspberry patch. The There is a bindweed issue and what I do is every so often out, I come over here and I unravel the bindweed and pull it off. I hate bindweed, it is so annoying, but believe it or not, this is a lot better than it's been in a while, okay? Last year, it kind of got the best of me. This year, I'm just endeavoring just to pull it off like this, but because we have so many allotment and so much space, we're kind of like at the point where it's one of those things that when it gets bad, I come over like this and I just pull it off. It takes about forever, roughly, to pull off, but I kind of like just pull the bits off at the top and then I go and literally crawl through <laughs> the raspberry patch and get all of the um, bits that are growing, the tiny little bits, which is annoying. I know, I can imagine that you can think it's boring and tedious, but I really want to get to the point where buying weed is a issue that I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember when I had buying weed. It was really irritating and that was it. So it is something that I am ongoingly doing, believe it or not, but it kind of like where it's really deep and really thorny, there's only so much you can actually do to get the buying weed off. I hate buying weed though. So it is something that I'll probably do tomorrow, which I know it makes it look awful, but trust me, I'm weeding continuously and this is just one of the times when I come through and weed. So I'm trying to weaken it. Easiest way to do that is going all the way to the bottom and pulling it out at the bottom like this. That is the best way. Well, the best way probably would be like putting weed killer down and killing it all, but I'm just not willing to do that. So this is the, the way I'm doing it, I should say, not the best way. So that's going to be a fun job for tomorrow. Okay, at the back, we have some currants. I will be coming through and harvesting them as soon as I can, as soon as I'm able. Buying weed at the back as well is a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, but you can see that we've got lots of black currants. They're starting to ripen up and looking fantastic. I can't wait. We're going to make black currant jam with them. 
which is just outstanding. I do need to come down and spend like an entire day weeding, um, but because of the heat at the moment, I just haven't been able to. It's just been too hot. And I've got to the point in my life where I kind of refuse to get incredibly sick for weeding. And that sounds awful, doesn't it? Because I'm not going to get a heat stroke this year, which which leads you to believe that I had it last year, which I did. These are looking great, aren't they? Do you remember I told you that this is going to be covered in berries? And it is, which is very exciting. There's still loads of flowers on here. They need to go black before we harvest them, but they're looking really, really good. Do need to come through and pull some stinging nettles here again. That's an ongoing, that's an ongoing issue. And the rhubarb's looking really, really good. And I actually, I would say, good enough to harvest again. Um, I like it when you get the really big leaves. And when you look, I like to have like a big, thick rhubarb. And I prefer this rhubarb to the other rhubarb because it's red. So when you cook your rhubarb, it literally doesn't matter about flavor, but it just looks nicer. And we eat with our eyes, don't we? So yeah, I'm excited about that. A bit bummed about the bindweed but if I embarrass myself with you you know it'll get done because I'll be like oh, I can't I can't show that the next time I do a tour I just can't okay so this is looking really good as you know I'm just coming through and I see another onion that is ready so I'm just gonna give that a pull when it's falling down like this I'm kind of just pulling them out as I see them and it looks really good. You want to fall, them to fall over so you get that kind of seal here. Um, I've got lots of things going on in this bed. Down this side here are my new uh, beetroots that I did the other day. Over here are my celery. Celery is going to be a big harvest or an important harvest for us this year for chicken stock. Um, we've also got some beetroots. These are multi-sown beetroot, which are exciting. Um, and the singing nettles that I have to pull out. Some of them have gone to seed, oh, but I keep them for the chickens. So it's all good for those ones. So what I just do is I come here and I just give them a pull and they come off and I just give them to the chickens. The chickens absolutely adore them. Oops. stronger than me. There we go. So I will come through and harvest this beetroot when it bulbs up a little bit. This is perennial spinach. This one's where I'll come through and harvest some of the leaves of it. Something that always amazes people that dig is that you can walk on a no-dig no bed. Um, I don't know how you get around if you're digging your beds because I just walk on the beds. So it must be quite stressful for those people to be like, she's walking on the beds! She's walking on the beds! <laughs> so this is another bed that has baby um, leeks in it. I'm not uncovering them yet because we've got alien leaf miners. I just don't want them to get in there. This one is an interesting one. Whoops, this one's an interesting one. If I put it down properly. So we've got peas here that I'm saving for seed. These are ready now so they need to be harvested because before I checked them um, and they were still soft to the touch so I'm going to go through and pull all of the ones I can um, and I just store them in the freezer and I don't, I've got to the point in my life that I don't even bother to, um, to blanch stuff and it's been fine so far so I'm not telling you to do it but I'm just saying that that is what I do and it's really lovely I'm really enjoying it it's really good it's really delicious and I just because I find I like broad beans don't get me wrong but I, a handful on my plate like I use a handful for all three of us because I find them very overwhelming like quite filling and I like them in like salads and things like that but I only like a few of them so over the year I'll eat quite a lot of them because like a handful a day kind of goes quite far but I don't want to have like tons and tons on my plate I don't know if you are like that but I think they're really good for you so I want to eat them I kind of like want to eat things that are really healthy for me all the time so let's have a look at our potato patch I think the potato patch wasn't very good this year this is our potato patch as you can see it's a little bit patchy isn't it I don't understand why so I was looking back on the video where I applied these and I was like, I've definitely left spaces and not put potato in. But I've looked and I use seed potatoes and I did leave 
in, which is really strange. And one of my friends, she did the opposite. She kept her potatoes from last year and planted them all out. And she's got very patchy growth as well. So I wonder if it's just a bad potato year. Are you having potatoes? Are you having pota patchy potato issues? The ones I've done in buckets, still, they, I'll show you those in a minute, and they haven't all sprouted either, which is weird, right? So yeah, what I've done is grown these like I do it every year in horse, uh, in what's it called, wood chips. So some of them are starting to come up now. Maybe it's the rain, so I can see them coming up. There's two more here, but why are they taking so long to get up? No idea. And two more here. Now, as you can see, you've got decent sized plants. You've got some coming up like this big. No idea why. This is just a weird one. This has never happened to me before. Normally they all come up at one time and you would think like, oh, because you haven't watered them. But I've watered this every day during the drought. No idea. No idea. This one here, are you gonna stay nice there? So this here, should I go into the middle and then crouch down like a little panther? So this is my pepper and chili patch. And I've got some uh, aubergines in here. When I say some, I mean one. Um, these are looking really good. I have not really done amazingly on the pepper front so far this year. Some of them are blossoming now, which is good. But I don't know, I just feel like everything's so tiny. But then when you look back, like on on videos and pictures you're like oh no it was this tiny last year so i feel like come on hurry up now this patch here looks really good as well and you can see i've got some more onions that are much whoops much 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 smaller but these onions are a different variety which are a smaller onion so it makes sense that they are smaller also we've got things like this oh just pulled the whole thing out. Things like this, let's try again. There we go. Which are the onion bolting. I've had loads of these onions bolt. But they are still unedible, so I'll take them home and use them in something. At the moment, I'm using them in everything. So I'm using them from soups to stews to everything. So, just, just leave, abandon them, shall we, in the in the walkway and then we won't forget them. So here I've redone the horse manure bed. Um, and I did that because I've pulled out a load of garlic there. So I thought that whilst I have five seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, what they call beetroot seeds in. I've got some beetroot growing here as well and some beetroot growing here. And I'm just gonna multi-sow -sow them. so that I get a good harvest out of them because I do want to have quite a lot of pickled beetroots this year. You can always thin them out as they grow. So I'm just waiting for the rest of these onions to topple over like I showed you. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna pull them and I'm not sure if I'll re horse manure that. If it's as thin as this one, I will. And I'm gonna beetroot the whole way across, probably from seed, um, and just have beetroots growing here for the rest of the year. They grow really well. And the only issue I have with them is leaf miner, which you just go along and press and pop them. Which don't sounds grim, but that's what I do. So this was a garlic bed. As you can see, it's empty. I've re horse manured it. It was a roof stout method, but I've chosen to do a horse manure bed instead. So that's exciting. And what I've done is I've sown this all with carrot seeds. So hopefully we have a huge bed of carrots, which will be really exciting because I really want some carrots. Um, I'm not very good at sowing carrots. I really struggle with it. Um, I've done it on a horse manure bed last year and it was the first year I had a really good harvest of carrots, like amazing harvest of carrots. So I'm hoping that this year this will do the same. I've got some onions left which are uh, from seeds so they're taking a little bit longer than my other ones and I've got some carrots at the far side going to seed as you can see I think it's important to have carrots go to seed because I think that's going to give me better seeds okay than I did originally so I want to really concentrate on seed production this year so this is my asparagus all grown up from seed looks good doesn't it so every year I have more and more asparagus going in and this is three years old now 
and go so quickly. So I'm really happy to have asparagus and I'm hoping to have like a, a whole like double bed of asparagus because we really enjoy it. Um, and you only harvest this from when it sprouts all the way until June. So it's not a very long season for it, but it makes these beautiful ferns afterwards and all of these little like little blobs on the end are seeds so you can collect your own seed and grow it from seed it's really sustainable and great so this is one of my favorite beds at the moment this is jasmine's bed um as you see we've getting a ton of flowers on it dahlias grown from seed this year they look great absolutely lovely flower just show you them also sown from seed the dahlias looking good uh, this is another dahlia they did have a bit of a pest damage to start they did have a bit of a pest damage to start off with they were being attacked by the rabbits who ate the first flowers on them but they're absolutely fine now um, they're really quite healthy thriving plants and they're looking really really good so what I've done is I've gone ahead and left them and hope for the best and apparently it's worked and you've got these beautiful flowers on them I never know what color they're going to be until they sprout obviously because I've got a mix but it's really interesting to see how well they're doing now um, Jazz has also got pumpkins growing so this here is some form of pumpkin I can't remember what there's another pumpkin over there one of them is called a zombie pumpkin um, and I cannot remember what the other one is called I think it's just called a, a giant big is it Big Jim or something like that, pumpkin? The absolute star of this season has been the strawberries. I've got tons of strawberries. I'm actually collecting them in, in freezer bags, sticking them in the freezer, and I'm gonna make loads of jam with them very soon. But this patch is amazing for strawberries. We're getting so many. You can see how many strawberries are dotted about at the moment, and they're just perfect. We're losing hardly any, the pest. And there's nothing better, and there's nothing better than a strawberry if you're growing yourself. They're so amazing, so delicious. So let's move on. This massive, impressive tree that is, as you can see, 40 foot tall, is Jasmine's little uh, cherry tree. So it is very, obviously, very tall, and um, yeah, it's, it's doing well. It has a little bit of, I believe, black spot on it as you can see which I believe is a fungal illness I've just seen this so I'll very much be excited to uh, know if you know anything about it because this is the first time I've literally seen it also so this is on a rootstock I believe it's called so it's grafted together and the rootstock is actually sprouting so it looks like perhaps an apple tree. These are all the flowers that Jasmine's growing. Um, they're all from bulbs, I got them from B&Q. Right, and oh my God, all my days, right, B&Qs, I have to say. They have a sale about November and they sell like big, big packs of um, bulbs, like loads of them. And they sell them like for like a pound each so I bought loads of them and Jasmine's put them all in her patch look aren't they lovely they look really good um, and they're still sprouting I mean they've been sprouting all season just different ones at different times they just look fab so I'm definitely going to get more later season ones and probably do the other side of it as well so we have more in the double down on the dahlias I've done loads of lupins as well and I know Jasmine's going to love it so you can actually put them around the outside I was going to put lupins because they're perennial, they're going to look great. I've also spread some seeds of foxglove around Jasmine's little patch and I know she'll really appreciate the beautiful flowers. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this down here. If you can see it, this is another mole. Um, what I do to stop the mole is quite simple. I just take these mole granules and I just spread them over just like that. So that will stop the mole being able to dig over here. It doesn't hurt them. It simply just tastes bad. It's a scattering mole granules, that's it. Um, it's worked really well in my greenhouse. Talking of which, just look at the greenhouse. So, as you can see, we have absolute ton of stuff here. Um, we've got lettuces all along. It's really humid in here. And we've got loads of melons. The melons are doing really good. I am gonna grow them vertically. So probably gonna do that in a little while. And on this side of it, you can see all of the garlics that are starting to dry. They're looking really good. I've got 
what was it, 145 there? Which is a ridiculous number, isn't it? Just absolutely ridiculous. So I just wanted to say absolutely thank you to you guys for um, like sticking with me and everything. I've got so close to a thousand subscribers, which is ridiculous, isn't it? Um, and it's all your fault, so thank you so much. Um, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I just want to show you the last thing. So, as you can see, potatoes. I've done potatoes in buckets. I used to do this years ago, and I've had a few potatoes left over, and I to put them, so I was like, I want to stick them in some buckets. So, all the way along here, there's a few that haven't really worked. I've watered them all the same. So, I wonder if they are, if they are somehow damaged or whatever. So, yeah, right. Well, let me know if you're having any issues with potatoes down below. It would be interesting if you are. If you're not, you can just say, no, Nick, you're absolutely rubbish, and that's the reason. That's fine. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.